for you. The recording is started. All right. Thank you guys uh, for coming. Today is uh, Wednesday, uh, May, May 6th. I uh, hope everybody had a good Cinco de Mayo and uh, enjoyed your tacos. <laughs> okay, so um, last week we did um, diagonal flying uh, from the second section. Okay, so let's start from the beginning and we'll go uh, from cross hands all the way up to diag uh, diagonal flying. Okay, all right, so here we are. At cross hands. Cross hands. So we go embrace the tiger, return to the mountain. Roll back. Press. Push. Fist under elbow. Step back, repulse the monkey. One, two. Three, diagonal fly. Okay, how do we do? Anybody have any questions? We're good? We're good, okay. Hi, you want to see diagonal flying? Okay. Uh, all right. So, uh, okay, let's go on then to the next movement. Um, the next movement would be uh, transitioning from diagonal flying to raise hands and step forward. Okay. So let's look at the footwork. If our footwork is we're here towards the front right corner in a bow stance, so that means my right foot points to the corner, left foot points straight to the 12 o'clock direction. Okay. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna shift our weight forward and we're gonna step in. When you step in, I want you to uh, cross your feet. Then as you shift your weight back, now the left foot is pointing to the front left corner. This is 12 o'clock. As you shift your weight back and pivot on the right ball of your foot, now you should be in an empty stance, meaning your feet should no longer cross. So the reason to cross the feet is because we're defining a new um, center line direction. We're going from a diagonal direction to the straight direction. So when we're here and we shift weight and we step in and we shift weight back and you pivot and turn your hips, now our new center direction is going to be 12 o'clock. So, so here I need for you to make sure, uh, try to make sure that your feet, uh, if we don't cross the feet, then what happens is our footwork is too far apart. We're more like in a bow stance, okay? So this is too far of a reach. So by crossing the feet and then shifting back and pivoting, now we're pretty much in a very comfortable position where we're in an empty stance and we're gonna go into an empty stance using the heel. Uh, we're gonna switch from the ball to the heel um, to make sure that we're in a good uh, you know, empty stance. So all you need to do at this point is pick up the, the right foot, put your heel on the floor, uh, heel edge on the floor, and then rock forward and place the whole heel on the floor, okay? So, so here we are in our bow stance. We move weight forward, step in, move weight back, make sure that back foot is 45 degrees, turning the hips and pivot on the right ball of the foot. Pick up your foot, put your heel on the floor, 
rock forward all the way onto the heel and keep the front part of your foot off the floor. Now we're in an empty stance going towards 12 o'clock direction. Front foot point straight, back foot is at a 45 degree. 70% of the weight is in the back leg, 30% forward leg. Yes? Yes, okay. All right, let's try that again from here. Okay, start off in a good bow stance. Move weight forward, stepping in. Make sure this back foot points at a 45 degree angle. Shift back, turn the hips, turn the body, pick up your foot, put your heel edge on the floor, rock forward all the way onto your heel. How's that? Yes? Okay, all right, question. question. Veronica, you have a question? So Someone my else? question is, when you are with your heel edge on the floor, how much weight is on that heel? Not very much weight. Okay. Not, not very much weight because we just replanted it, uh, maybe say 5%. And then when you rock onto the whole heel, then you should be at 30%. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Any other question? Yes, I have a question, Allison. Um, which, what direction are your hips pointing at when? the end there, at and, the end? Uh, my hips will be pointing to the left corner. They'll follow my left foot direction. Okay, thanks. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, let me go back to, um, uh, scroll, scroll back with Michael. Let me go back to Veronica's question, okay? Uh, when you put your heel on the floor, we haven't committed our weight yet to it. So, so if a if a um, if somebody came by to kick your foot, you should be able to lift that foot off the floor because you really haven't assigned very much weight to it yet. You understand what I'm saying? So, so when I'm here and I come forward, I go like this, and I shift my weight back, and I pick up my foot and I put my heel on the floor, I haven't committed very much weight to it yet. So that if somebody came by to kick my foot, I should easily be able to pick it up without having to shift back and pick it up. You understand what I'm saying? You know, it's like, um, for instance, when we go from one bow stance to the next bow stance, and when I step out, I can bring my foot back in until I assign weight then I can move my weight forward, okay? So, so my teacher uh, will say, Master Young will say, step as though you are on thin ice because you don't know how, how much, if you were to put weight onto that ice, if you put it on right away, you may fall into the ice. You may not, it's just gonna depend on how that ice is at that particular point. So we, we tread lightly. Um, one of the things that, um, okay. How many of you used to watch the show Kung Fu with David Carradine? Kung, Kung Fu with David Carradine? Yeah. Uh, okay, all right. I was a young kid when I watched Kung Fu with David Carradine, okay? Uh, one, of the, one of the episodes showed him uh, with his teacher in a room and uh, it, it was, uh, uh, um, the floor was all white. And his teacher made him do his footwork on this white floor. Well, the white floor was rice paper. So what he had to do was his, his intention, his, his uh, exercise was to step without tearing the rice paper. So the same thing holds true here. We must tread and, and walk, you know, some people say, we want to walk like a cat, okay? So, so when you step, you don't want to put so much weight down that it tears the rice paper. We want to just place the foot down and be able to lift it up. And then if need be, now we can, we can apply weight to it. Um, and, and I don't know how much rice paper is now, but before it used to be quite expensive. And so every time that he would uh, tear the rice paper, you would get in trouble. So not so much like that today, okay? So um, anyway, so you must tread lightly when you step, okay?
okay? All right, so let's, let's try. I have a question. Okay. Um, is there a reason why you turn on the ball of the foot as opposed to not bringing the feet across and just pivoting on the heel? Oh, that's a really good question. Let's, let's, uh, no, that is, it's a really good question. Okay. So, so when we pivot on the ball of the foot, that will, and, and we turn, that will give us a comfortable uh, hip rotation. Okay. okay. The hip is what's driving the movement. Well, actually it's the waist, but okay. So by turning up the hip, it's moving our foot. Okay. And what it is, it's going to, it's going to widen our stance. Mm -hmm. If we pivot on the heel, it's actually going to close our footwork. So, so depending upon how you step, okay. So can you, can you see me here? Okay. Yeah. So by crossing the feet, if I shift back and pivot on my heel, now my feet will be crossed. Right. I, I right? think I haven't crossed my feet. Yeah, no, no, no. Don't cross your feet. Don't cross I, your feet. I, but I mean, I think I would not step in as far and just turn the heel. Uh-huh. As yeah. opposed to... Oh, okay. So, so what I mean by that is... Okay, so Michael just, just said, but you're telling them to cross their feet. Yes. All right. When, when we define a new center line, by pivoting on the ball of the foot, now our feet are no longer crossed, okay, okay. because we pivoted and relaxed the hips. If, if when we cross our feet, then we pivot on the heel, our footwork will be crossed and our center line will no longer be defined. It'll be defined as, as being crossed, okay? Mm -hmm. So we need to define a new center line without crossing our feet at, at the end. Do, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay, all right. So let's try that again. Question. Okay. Uh, this is Pierre. Just to follow up on that, that question, the, the way I understood the question was another way to end up without your feet crossed is not to bring the back foot in as much and to turn on the heel. And I think the question is why don't you want to turn on the heel? Why can't you turn on the heel? Well, there's not saying that you cannot not, not uh, pivot on the heel, okay? Uh, the one thing I want you to keep in mind is what is Tai Chi based on? What theory? Yin, yin and yang. Okay, so I, I need Pierre to put your microphone. Okay, I want you to participate in this. Okay, yes. so, so Tai Chi is based on what theory? Yin yang theory. Okay, so say for instance, I do this and I come here and I pick up my foot. I pivoted on my heel. There's weight on my heel. I pick up my heel and put my heel on the floor. Okay, so how is that showing yin and yang? Well, first of all, it's showing yin and yang by having one foot down, okay? Then I pick it up and, and reset the foot. So we can say that's kind of yin and yang because I'm going from down to up, back to down, all right? But what I want you to think about here is this transition of here, of pivoting on the ball of the foot, okay? And, 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 then, and then changing from the ball to the heel. Just like when we do here, why, when we do hand strums the loop, why can't we just rock back on the heel, pick up the foot and put the heel back on the floor? Just like we do with single whip. There's a differentiation between the, okay, there's a difference between the two, right? So the same thing holds true here, okay? So if you think of how yin and yang works, okay, by pivoting here, now we could pick up the foot put the heel on the floor. We change from the ball to the heel, heel to the ball. Um, we, we do that pretty much, uh, I will say there's one exception, is, is when we go from white, uh, from raised hands to white crane spreads and swings, we go from heel to heel. Uh, we transition. Okay. Yeah, Thank and you. Michael just reminded me, step back for post month, we do the same thing. Um, but we're not going, but we're going backwards. We're not going forward. We went forward at the end. It's back yeah. and forward. Yeah. So, so uh, what we want at the end is to come forward, to come forward, not to go back. With Repul Repulsive Monkey, we're going back. So, um, so that's the difference. Uh, will it make a huge difference? Yeah, probably so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can you do it like that? Absolutely. Uh, we can modify our footwork, um, but you know, 
uh, I want you to kind of be clear about uh, exactly what the young family want us to do and and exactly what our bodies are capable of doing and then how do we find the middle ground between the two we can try both ways and you'll see the one's better than the other yeah yeah that's a good example Michael says try both ways see what it feels like and your body will tell you uh, hopefully uh, what feels better so you, you can try that and see okay um, Thank you. Anyway, I don't know if that really truly answered your question. Um, yeah, it, it does. I just, I think I've done it the other day, and I was just wondering why different. So that's helpful to know. Thank you. Okay. All right, good. Okay, so um, uh, questions on the program? One more quick question. When you first go into the move from, um, from uh, the, the other move, and you step back, do you lift off the, do you push back on the right front foot as you, you put your, your left heel back and then you lift back, push back a little bit and then come in? No. You don't push off the toe at all, the no. ball of the foot? No, because at, at that point, Marion, uh, we've already transferred our weight. Okay. So now is pick up your foot and, and put the heel on the floor. Interesting. Okay, I, all right, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so, so am I understanding your question correctly? So what you're asking is, okay, so I shift forward and I step. I shift back and I pivot. Do I push off here and, and, and rock back a little bit more and then pick up my foot and place it on the floor? Yes. Is that, okay. Yeah. The answer is no. Okay, <laughs> thank you. I'm yeah. glad I asked. <laughs> Okay, hey, these are really, really good questions. Okay, all right, well, let's try the footwork again and make sure that our shifting is correct, okay? All right, so here we are here in our bow stance to the corner. All right, move weight forward, step in. Move weight back, pivot. Okay, so now your weight, most of your weight should be on your left leg. Pick up your right foot, put your heel edge on the floor. Now rock forward onto your heel, that should give you 30%. Keep your back leg bent, knee bent. Yes? Yes. Okay, all right, good. Okay, so any other questions on this footwork? Okay, that's no. All right, okay, so now what I want you to do, okay, because we haven't covered this yet in the in the first section, okay, is I want everybody's arms up. Okay, all right. And I just lost sound. Uh oh. oh. Okay, so from here, I want your hands in front of you, not alongside of you. Okay, so here more in front. Okay, I want your arms to come back and in and forward. Back, in, forward. Kind of like you're swimming. Okay, and try to keep your palms level. So try not to, when you go back, to have your hands come down. Keep your palms level. Okay, arms level. Okay, then when your arms are coming forward, I want you to turn your shoulders towards the left, keep your right arm extended, and keep your left arm bent. So we go back, open, forward, turn. Back, open, forward, turn. Back, open, forward, turn. Okay, all right, so I want you to kind of uh, uh, get that feeling of this, the, this swimming type of feeling, okay? So here we are at raise hand, uh, at uh, uh, diagonal fly. All right, we're gonna shift forward and step in. When we step in, our arms are gonna stay the same. As you shift your weight to the left foot, I want your arms to come back, pivot, Step, close your arms, turn slightly to the left. 
Now your shoulders should be towards the corner. Your arms should be in your body center. Which means both of your, your, your hands are on either side of your nose. Don't cross that center line. They're on either side of your nose. So that when you extend your arms and bring your hands back, they're on either side of your nose. Now, it won't be this far apart. They'll be pretty close to the center, center here on either side of your nose, okay? All right, let's try that again from here. Move weight forward, step in. As you move weight back, open your arms. Pivot, step, close your arms, turn your body. Okay, now your end posture, your arms need to be in front. Don't have them to the side. They should be in your center, okay? Your left tiger's mouth will be pointing to the right middle forearm and it will be slightly downward. It won't be parallel to it. It will be slightly tilted downward. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Let's try it again from here. All right. Raise hands. Step forward. Forward. Step in. Back. Open. Step. Close. How's this? This is pretty simple, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hear I hear a little bit of moaning. Okay. No, not so okay, let's try it again from here. All right, raise hands, step forward, shift forward, step in. Shift back, open, pivot, close. How's this? Okay, okay, better is good, better is good. Okay, so let's try it again. I'll go this direction. Okay, raise hands and step forward. Forward, step in. Back, open, pivot, step, close, turn, and apply that 30%, okay? Now, are your arms in your body center? Yes. Or are they on one side or the other side? I'm not good. Should be in the center. Okay, and our hands are not like this. They're not like this. It's like the left hand is turned downward slightly. So imagine grabbing somebody here, grabbing. It's hard to grab when it's flat like this. So it's more diagonally down. Okay, let's try it again. Okay, so raise hands and step forward. Shift forward, step in. Now, when you shift back, now our attention, our eyes, we're looking at the 12 o'clock position. Circle your arms, step, close. Still looking at 12 o'clock. Okay, one more time. Okay, so now we're looking at the front right corner. Forward, step, back. Now turning direction to the 12 o'clock direction. Step, close your arms. Okay, all right, good. Okay, anybody have any questions on this? One more okay. question. Okay. One more question. How high do you want your uh, hands to be in front of your arms? Like just that shoulder height that we practice? Oh, that's a great question. Our right fingertip should not go past the height of the tip of your nose. Okay. The okay. Left hand lower. If right. you your left arm over and turn towards the side is roll back. Almost, almost kind of like roll back. Roll back, the palm will be turned a little bit more. Uh, this one, it's turned a little bit to the left a little bit. But you're in roll back position, um, almost like roll back position. So um, no, no higher than the tip of your nose, your, your it, X finger. And are, is you, are you trying to do a, a heel of the hand hit? Uh, actually, uh, actually, it's going to be uh, uh, using the middle of your forearm. Uh, okay. uh, I'm going to have Michael come here so I show you. Okay. <laughs> <sighs> Sorry, Michael. <Okay. laughs> so the end posture is going to be, I've got his wrist. See how my hand 
is this way. Okay, it's this way. It's not going to be flat this way because I won't be able to grab. Okay, then I want behind his elbow, but I'm not going to touch his elbow like this. I'm going to break my hand. So I'm going to use my forearm. So what we want to do is we want to clap and miss. That's the direction of the split energy. We're going this direction. We want to clap and miss. So, so for instance, if I go from single whip, well, no, I can go here. Okay. Stay there. Stay there. Great. Okay. And, and he comes to hit towards me with his left arm. I can connect here, then step, and then, and then hit. Okay. Behind the, but behind the elbow. Okay. So we want the elbow to go one direction and the wrist to go the other direction. So our intention is to split this elbow joint. Well, okay. So just, just think of a, a plot for trying to hit you. <laughs> but let them know that, uh, leave them with a, a parting gift of having a limb kind of dangling there, you know, for giving them basically a what for. Don't try to hit me, okay? Um, Thank you. So, so uh, the first thing we do here is when the hit starts to come, we connect with the left hand and then we step and then we close. We close together towards the end. Yes, like that. Yes. I can do that. <laughs> and from the lute, which is the mirror image of this movement, right. is going opposite, is going a different direction. That's going up and down. This yeah. one's going side to side. Okay. But the same is, is the, the intention is the same. We want to break the elbow joint. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. Uh, okay, so um, any any other questions? Okay, so let's look. Uh, so from here we go to and yes. Can I ask a question? So when we're coming to bring our weight thirty percent, our heel down, is our are we moving from our waist or our hips to make that, or our hips already in place and then we move from our waist? Or does that clear? Yes, that's very clear. The correct answer is is what you said last. Okay, that I move from my waist at the thirty percent to bring the heel. If you look at the body position from here, now I'm, I'm turned already. My hips now are in the yeah. right. Position. Okay. So then all I have is I have this this okay. upper body turn. Thank which you. Is, which is coming from the middle body. Yes, you're welcome. Good question. Okay, anybody else have good questions? All questions are good questions. Okay, all right. So from here, you know, uh, we go to white crane spreads its wings. You guys already know that. Left knee brush. All right, so then, wow, we're already at, at, at our time. Okay. Uh, okay, so. Uh, Our next movement is needle at sea bottom. Um, Time-wise, are you guys uh, available to go for another 10 minutes? Yes. Yes? Okay. Yes. Right. yes. Can you okay. repeat the name of the move, please? Wh which one? The one you're doing now. Uh, it's called needle at the sea bottom. Okay, so, uh, so what's our footwork? We're going from a, a bow stance to an empty stance. So what I want you to do is we're gonna shift our weight forward and, and uh, close our footwork. But I don't want you to close your, cross your feet, okay? We're just stepping in a little bit so that uh, we don't have so much length, okay? Then I want you to shift your weight back and rock back on your heel. Pick up your foot, put the ball of your foot on the floor, and then here, I want you to just sit, just Sit. That means bending the, the knees like you want to sit in a chair. Okay? That's all I want you to do. All right, from here, let's do it from here. Okay, we're in a bow stance. We're at left knee brush. Move weight forward, take a little step in. Move weight back, rock back on your heel edge. Pick up your foot, put the ball of your foot on the floor, and sit. Now, the important thing here, everybody stand up, okay? When you sit, you must make sure that your right knee 
is in line with the right foot, okay? Uh, this is to make sure you don't hurt yourself. So when you, when you sit, it doesn't matter how low you go. It matters how correctly aligned you are. Just bend your knees a little bit. Bend your knees a little bit and make sure this back knee is in line with this back foot. Um, you don't have to sit on a low chair. It could be a stool. <laughs> just change your footwork. And even if you just went like this and bent your knees a little bit, it will be right as long as your knee follows your foot. Okay? So let's try this footwork again. I'll go this direction. All right. Move weight forward, half step in. Move weight back, rocking back on the left heel. Pick up your left foot, put the ball of your foot on the floor. Okay, look down at your right knee. Is your knee aligned with your foot? Now, sit. Just bend your knees a little bit, okay? And make sure when you sit, your knee is still in line with your foot, okay? Um, it's very common. Um, people want to sit as low as they can. Just remember, the lower you sit, the higher you got to come back up. Remember, what goes down has got to come back up. And uh, it, oftentimes, people, their knee will collapse inward. And uh, 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 th this will hurt you in the long run. So I don't want anybody getting hurt, okay? We have enough problems as, as it is. We don't... Uh, we don't need that kind of hurt, okay? So let's try it again. Forward, half step in, back, walking back on the front heel. Pick up your left foot, put the ball of your foot on the floor, and sit. Okay, all right, very good. Now, what is our right arm doing? So here we are at a knee brush, okay? So that means the right arm is forward, and it's not flat, it's, it's turned slightly, because we're uh, hitting, striking with the heel edge. Uh, okay. So, so when we yield forward, when we go forward, it's because uh, we want to, somebody's grabbing our wrist. So we go forward and extend our hand. And when you do, I want your hand to go down slightly. Then uh, when we come back, we're going to bring the arm back and it should be opposite your face. Then when you change your footwork. I want you to arc your arm downward. So it's going to arc down. Okay, like, like um, you know, those Mexican cliff divers, you know, they jump off the cliff and then they go into the water. Well, they don't go uh, jump off the cliff and go like this. They have to make an arc. So remember, everything in this form is rounded. Okay, and when you do this, jump off the cliff like this. Don't jump off the cliff like this. Don't lift your elbow up. Keep your elbow down. Just extend your arm until it's almost straight. Okay? So from here, just, just let it come forward and go down. Try not to lead with your shoulder or your elbow. Don't lift up your shoulder. Don't lift up your elbow. Keep them both downward and just let them go forward. Forward and out. Forward, out, and downward, okay? What this left hand is gonna do, because it's here resting comfortably as we do a knee brush, is it's just gonna lift up, and then it's just gonna go back down. You don't have to think too much about the left arm. Up and down, okay? All right, so how do we do this movement and put it all together? All right, we're like this. As you shift your weight forward and take a half step in, extend your arm, flatten your hand a little bit, and have it go down just slightly. Then as you move your weight back, turn the body to the right. Left hand's coming up, rocking back on the heel. So what this left arm is doing is it's trying to separate them from uh, uh, our, our wrist, okay? But if that doesn't work, we change to the ball of the foot and we sit, and the left arm just floats down as the right arm's coming down as well. And we end up in this posture, so the right arm should be about 45 degree angle, 
from the shoulder downward, okay? Left hand should be on the outside of your knee area, not on the inside, not in front, alongside. Your hips will be kind of towards the back uh, foot direction. Your torso will be turned. So your shoulders are now square forward, okay? But remember, don't take your hip with you because then what's gonna happen is your knee's gonna turn in, okay? So keep your hip joint open. See, Bella's emphasizing, you must keep hip, hips open. Oh, it's very important. Thank you, Bella. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, all right. So, so, so if we go from here, we go from here. All right, move weight forward, extend your right hand, go down slightly, take a, a little step in. Move weight back, drop your right elbow. Bending the right wrist, rocking back on the left heel. Change your footwork to the ball of the foot. Then sit. Okay, sit. Okay, all right. So what I want, I, I don't see anybody doing this, but I, I need to make sure that I tell you this. Okay, when we do this movement, don't have your torso do this. Don't, don't, don't collapse in and go like this, okay? Just sit, and we're still looking forward, but now we're looking forward beyond my hand position. So if you're like this, you cannot see anything in front of you. You can see your footwork real well, but you can't see anything in front of you, okay? So uh, when, when we do this movement, okay, Move weight, extend your arm, slightly have it go down, take a step in, shift back, turning the body, bring the right hand in. Now the right palm should be opposite your face, left arm up a little bit, a little bit below shoulder. Change your footwork. Now we're gonna sit and extend your right arm out, left arm's falling to the side. Shoulders should be square, knee in line with foot. Yes. And our eye direction is looking beyond our right finger direction. Knee flat, C bottom. Um, what was the name of that movie we just saw? Uh, oh, meatball, not yet. Wasn't knee flat, C bottom part of that movie? No, okay. All right, I'm having a conversation with myself, okay. All right, so let's go from here. Let's go from uh, a diagonal flight, okay. We go to raise hands and step forward. Change your footwork. Okay. White crane spreads its wings. Left knee brush. All right. Needle at C bottom, yield forward, right hand goes down slightly, take a step in, back. Change your footwork, go down, sit. Okay, is your knee in line with your foot? Is your right arm about 45 degrees? If you, is your left arm outside of your leg? You're looking direction forward? Okay, go ahead, stand up, stand up. Don't stay down too long. Your leg will tell you when you're too when you stay too long. It'll say, "Get up, please get up." Okay. All right. Do I have any questions on either of those two movements? How are we doing? Good. Yes. 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 Okay. Let's take it from. Uh, let's take it from cross hands. Let's just do that. I want to do that. Okay. Here are cross hands. All right, embrace the tiger. Return to the mountain. Roll back. Push.
Transition to fist under elbow. White crane spreads its wings. Left knee brush. Needle at the sea bottom. Okay, how's that? Yes, yes, yes. Anybody have any questions? Well, we did a lot today. Okay, no questions? All right, your job is to practice raise hands all the way to knee at sea bottom, okay? Most important parts of these two movements is we're, we're trying to define a new center line. So, so step in, and when you pivot, you have a new center line, okay? when you go to raise hands. Knee left, knee bottom. Knee, right knee must follow right toe direction, okay? Uh, if there's two things that you only listen to, take, take, take those two things, okay? All right, no questions? Uh, have a fabulous week, everybody. Uh, some of you I'll see Friday. Uh, some of you, oh, Ed's uh, gonna be leading uh, the practice this Sunday. Uh, Kelly did a fabulous job on Sunday. Yes, yeah. she did. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, so, um, so Ed, Ed Juan is going to lead the practice uh, this week. So you'll have the, the pleasure of, uh, uh, of practicing with Ed. Uh, so um, anyway, uh, oh, and is this, this Sunday's Mother's Day? Yeah. Yes. Oh, my. Yep. Okay. Well, so um, for those of you that can make it to Mother's Day uh, Tai Chi practice, I hope to see you there. Uh, if not, and happy Mother's Day, okay? Thank you. Have a right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank, Thank you, Nancy. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, Nancy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sets. Where can I find the recordings again of uh, set, the first recording of set two and the second and the third? Uh, They're on our, we have a YouTube page. Go to youtube.com and then yeah. the, the uh, uh, account is YCF Seattle. YCF for Young Chung Fu Seattle. Okay, YCS Seattle. F, F Young F Chung F Fu. F. Okay. F okay, thank you so much. <laughs> I need to practice a lot. <laughs> thank you. Um, hey, Marion, how's yeah. your uh, hip on um, uh, sitting?